Jokey, jokey, jokey Sunday papers. Jokey, jokey, jokey. Jokey, 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 jokey. Jokey, jokey, jokey Sunday papers. That's crazy. Jokey, jokey Sunday papers. Jokey, jokey. Three, two, three. Hey now, read all about it. Read all about it. Sunday papers coming to you. The Nashville Tribune and the Escondido Times. The second edition this morning already. This is Not the latest that edition. Listeners. This is the yeah. latest issue. We already tried this, and I have had the worst Wi-Fi issues. Yeah, well. So let's hope it goes well. It'll be fine. Um, by the way, we want people to write in and let us know if you prefer this on Zoom where we're both on the screen or when it's in person and we're across from each other and you only see us one at a time. We're kind of curious which They're one's gonna better. They're all going to say in person. I know. Listen to you. You're so, it's so hard for you to drive seven minutes from your apartment to my office, isn't it? Uh, I guess yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm not gonna deny it. Um, I'm not gonna yell a lot because I literally lost my voice during the second show last night. I did the second half of the show in a horsey whisper. It was brutal, wow. and the laughs just went. Uh, oh, down. really? Yeah, it just. Well, you they just were trying get... to hear the. They were trying to hear the gold. But you know, it's funny. You you realize that like. Certain comedians have great voices. Oh, Louis C.K. has a great voice. Yep. Um, you know, voices that really resonate. Chappelle has an amazing voice. Just saw him two nights ago. We'll talk about that later. And it uh, connects. Here. It connects in a way with people that you just get more laughs. And I have a fucking thin, high-pitched, whiny chick voice, like almost a homosexual. Speaking of uh, your the way you described your voice, I listened, I watched Michelle Wolf's uh, hour, and I really liked it. And she has a hard voice to take, tough think, voice, yeah. Which she's talked about before, yeah. But really strong material, I thought. I think she's really strong. I don't think it's her best special. Um, okay. I, I'm I'm still a huge fan, but I, I, I it's good. I don't. I think she shot it like. At Comedy on State in Madison, Wisconsin, and I think there was something about the way they shot it that I didn't like. They like, and then it went to another city also. Oh, it did. Yeah, for yeah. the middle section. Yeah, and then it went back. Like it was almost like, like it when it ended at say thirty minutes or twenty five. It all of a sudden like a credits came up, like thank you or whatever written by. I'm like, what? And then it's like, do you want to watch the next episode? So that's how they did that one. Yeah. Maybe um, I should do that on my next special. She has a great, though, I, I think we might have talked about it a little last week. She kind of tricks. Uh, she has a little trick. She traps with logic. She traps some uh, the audience in a, yeah. uh, in a view, that in a bias or a view that they have, and it's very well done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what else? You're, uh, you're in... Nashville. What's yeah, what's going on Nashville what we these already days. talked about before my Wi-Fi ruined it. But yeah, it's Americana week. It's a very big week here. The only thing I can equate it to, which I've never been, but is South by Southwest, where there's an Amer Americana um, Music Awards. And then, but more than that, is every bar and con every conceivable space where there's a stage. There are amazing shows and music this week. And That's Tyler fun. Childers is here. You know, a lot of the usual suspects from uh, that type of country in a way. Wow. And yeah. So it's a very, very cool week. On top of that, we went downtown. Downtown already has a like a crowding problem in Nashville. But on top of Americana Fest, Chappelle's at Bridgestone, which is Madison Square Garden. I He had over 20,000 people there because he filled the floor also. No. And at the exact same time... Uh, Tosh has uh, sold out the Ryman, which is like three blocks away. So this town was overwhelmed. And Chappelle makes everybody, you know, uh, hand in their phones. That makes the load in so long. And even Hannah said she had never seen downtown Nashville like this. Like streets were closed because the, the line to get in to see Chappelle was down like three city blocks. Oh my God. Yeah. 
Was it worth it? Yeah, he was great. No, we also timed it perfect. Like we didn't do any of that. We didn't wait online. We ate because I called and I found out who the warm ups are. And I've seen the warm up, you know, Donnell. I've seen them before. I'm like, we really only have to see Chappelle. And, and there's a DJ also. And he had one guy I wish I had seen in a wheelchair warming up for him. And I don't know about him. Okay. And which was interesting because Chappelle announced, and this is not really spoiling anything. He's like, you know, that, you know, again, he's done with trans. He did mention punching down, which I talked to Holtzman mentioned that. Uh, and I love that about him. And he goes, uh, and so his new thing is uh, handicap people, I think, uh, is what he wants to make fun of. And then he literally made fun of, fun of them a little bit. It was crazy. But he's not, oh he's, not, he's not behind the strike. He's like, fuck the strike. Fuck the really? strike. Really? No yeah, shit. Yeah, he made fun of him. He goes, when I was, well, he was talking about SAG AFTRA. He's like, I had a show on Comedy Central and I couldn't get health insurance. But of course, he shouldn't be blaming the union, you know. But uh, that was his take on it. He's like, I can't. He's like, I'm on TV. I can't every week. I can't get health insurance. Yeah. Well, um, that's a stupid argument because it's actually great health insurance and it's and it's not difficult to get. You just have to. You just work, if you work, if, it used to be a lot easier because when you were an actor, as you know, our good friend Matt Malloy and people like that, they used to work. And if you if you got, you know, some work that year, like decent amount of work, you got health insurance. Now, everybody gets the absolute union minimum. Nobody's getting above the quote any long, above the uh, yeah. uh, scale anymore. So it's very hard to get insurance because the money doesn't even add up. You have to earn over like $40,000 a year to get insurance and nobody's getting there anymore. That's how fucking right. bad it is. Right. Yep. Um, so uh, what else? I want to talk about um, my... Uh, well, my summer break is over. I took I took off from stand up for the summer as I usually do. I did a little bit, and now I'm back in Escondido. Um, I lost my voice halfway through the show last night, nice. and now and now I'm uh, and I'm working on a lot of new stuff, good new nice. material. Yeah, talking about um, how well, like you. You and your woman have a good arrangement because you have your own place. And I think the only reason people live together and get married, it's purely financial. Who wouldn't want to have their own place just next to the other person's place? Uh, why? Yeah. I'll take half a bed. Why? You can have your own fucking... Everybody would rather sleep in their own bed with nobody in it. Another big thing is health insurance, man. This country, you know, I think more people more people get married because of that. Oh, for sure. Immigration, health insurance, yeah, housing. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So, um anyway, I need to work on that. So if anybody has jokes on that, email <laughs> them in. <laughs> Uh, what else is going on? What's this thing that you might... I talked to um, uh, Bart Coleman about this thing that you're going to work on with him. What's that all oh, about? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, Will Ferrell. He did it like five years ago, and I went as a fan. I didn't work on it. But I volunteer my time. They, they called. They said they wanted someone. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'll help out. It's He has this charity. It's a crazy name. It's called Cancer for Co College, I think. Uh -huh. Something. And I, th I should know more about it. I actually don't, but I believe it's based on an old college friend of his. But what it does is it helps families uh, when there's a diagnosis of cancer in the family pay for college. Anyway, it's this giant fundraiser. I don't think I could talk. There is a poster out, I believe, but like Lindsey Buckingham's playing, which is remarkable to me. And uh, But there's... Um, Smartless is going to do their a little bit of their podcast. You know, I'm thinking maybe they'll interview Will or some character Will will do or, you know, something like that. Ugh. But anyway, it's going to be at the Greek Theater, October 21st. I'm really not pushing it that hard because it's sold out. So um, how many people if you were to interview 100 Americans, random Americans, what percentage of them would think that Lindsey Buckingham was a man versus a woman? Uh, most would think a woman, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm glad his health is good enough. I had heard it was, of course, from our, our the biggest gossip we know, Tom O'Neill. Um, he, we had heard, he was like, had to cancel shows and was rushed to the hospital in Ireland or England, one of the two, when he was over there. Really? That, that was like six months ago, yeah, or, or maybe even a little more. I talked yeah. to Tom for about an hour yesterday, author of Chaos, everybody. Pick it up on Amazon. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the best books I've read in 10 years. It's about the, the Manson murders. Uh, I talked to him for about an hour yesterday, and there's a lot of gossip about our friends. There's a lot of drama going on. <laughs> Some people aren't talking. I mean, Tom is the he is the king of he, chaos. He creates chaos in every He's relationship. He's a shit stirrer also. Yeah. yeah, and they call him Radio Tom because anytime you give him some information and ask him not to tell anybody, they will know within five minutes of hanging up the phone with him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, Radio Tom, I like it. All right, all right we're, thank, low, we're low energy here, man. I know, know. you got to keep your voice up. down. Let's pick it up. Okay, let's thank Lyndon Pike for our logo this week. Very funny. How about funny. that? It's... Uh, it's the is it the original Frankenstein? I don't know which one that is. It looks like Bride of Frankenstein. Oh, Bride of Frankenstein, right? And you're I the bride. Thank you, Lyndon, yeah, for know. making I'm me the, the man. Look at that! Look at that hairdo I'm rocking, though. Nice. Our uh, song, song comes was from crazy. Colin Spadey. Great song, trippy, cool. Yep. And then let's get to some corrections. Handron Seavey, who's a is friend of mine. Is that a section? Mine. I forget. I don't know how oh, we do this podcast. Oh, no, it's not a section. Oh, really? Oh, okay. I don't think so. Well, I mean, technically it is because that's what I'm you have in the newspaper. Section. Sorry, All right. here it goes. Even if there's no graphic. So Handron's a friend. He's a very funny comic. And uh, he said, what's up, Greg? I was just listening to Sunday Papers, the reason the women's volleyball match. Remember we talked about how it was yes, the most attended? Yeah, hugely attended. 80,000 people. was packed was because the entire team's nudes got leaked last year. So it was all about sex appeal. Is that so, real? Yes. Yeah, so I went online and it was the Wisconsin women's volleyball team. And they all were taking photos of themselves topless, like groups of them in the locker room, and I it got leaked online. So, so Wisconsin's like the Kardashians of volleyball. Right. Like, uh, is everyone else just like where the Kardashians going to have to follow suit now and make their own sort of sex picks? Well... This may solve the problem of why attendance is down in male and female sports. I mean, you know, I don't want to sound sexist, but look at the pole vaulters. Look, look at, you know, Randy, uh, not Randy, uh, Ricky Fowler, you know, the golfer. His his wife is uh, the sexiest pole vaulter Stokey. in history. And she has fucking hundreds of millions of views. So and yeah, she hasn't been nude, but I mean, she wears like a thong and pole vaults. I mean, come on, people. That's pretty insulting. If that's why that many people showed up at this volleyball game. Why is it insulting? It means they think that they're beautiful. No, but they're not going there for the sport, like which is, I think, what they would like to think. Well, I think, look, why do people go to hockey games to see fights? Half the people there just want to see a brawl. Give the people what they want. To them. Yeah, I get it. All right. Well, all right. I got. I have some research to do after this. I've been to volleyball all, right. all of a sudden. Um, keep in mind, it's Wisconsin, so they they don't look like the Kardashians. Uh, they're Steve topless, Grosso. but they're all wearing a, a big hunk of cheese on their head. <laughs> they're topless, but that just means you can see the hair. Uh, Steve you Grosso. You see, they're cheese makers. That's what those are. That's what they're called in Wisconsin. <laughs> Steve Grosso says, hey, I thought I'd chime in on the corrections. Pacino's line, because she's got a great ass, is from the movie Heat. I think you said oh. it was from a different film. Oh, maybe I did. I don't know. Yeah, it's definitely Heat. You're right. Um, and then uh, David Chamberlain. Mike, thanks for playing the new hit single yesterday. He did. Uh, he's done a lot of music for yeah. us, but he he took my uh, my fake Elton John lyrics and made it into a song. He took the Dennis Gubbin song and put it to music. He's very fucking talented. Anyway, he said my company is actually called DBW Productions, uh, but for some promo, I'll tell you to go to my other domain, recordla.com as I assume that's something they might remember. So go to him if you're looking for uh, engineering, music engineering needs. 
Nice. CGH said it was Moon who landed the uh, Keith Moon who loaded the explosive into the bass yes. drum without anyone knowing. When you want the video, when you watch the video, Townshend Townshend is that how you spell it? It is. No shit. Is bending down and takes the full brunt of the explosion to one side of his head. It did permanently damage his hearing. He has said so much. And I think Moon got some shrapnel in him a little bit, like, you know, in his arm or whatever. Nothing serious, but it was, that was a real explosion. I listened to the Who, Who's Next, driving down here. Jesus Christ, the fucking, the engineering on that. I mean, the different guitar sounds. It's, it's the drumming. It's fucking crazy. The Who, you know, people forget that the Who are as good as Zeppelin and the Beatles and the Stones. Well, it's debated, of course, but I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, you forget how hard rocking the Who was. Yes. Like they're they're harder than Zeppelin, which I know a lot of people now are like, what? But they really they really are going for it in terms of just making a powerful sound more than Zeppelin did. And more experimental. And I, love Zeppelin. I love Zeppelin more, but I'm just saying that's the truth. Yeah. Way more experimental than the Stones. Uh, or Zeppelin, uh, in terms of the different types of music they were playing, rock operas and introducing different instruments. Um, people are going to argue with that for sure, because Zeppelin is known for doing that. But I stand by the who. Um, can you give a notice when you guys talk sports? from Rick. Can you give a notice when you guys talk sports? Maybe um, skip forward for a minute while we stumble around getting names and scores wrong. No, <laughs> no, Rick. That's what we do. That's what people tune in for. If you want facts, go to Barstool Sports. Okay, so back to this guy, Rick. Uh, no, we can't. That's how we roll. Yep. Uh, speaking of rolling, I'm rolling out to Shirley, Massachusetts on October 5th. Manchester, New Hampshire the next night. Nashua, New Hampshire the next night. Foxborough the next night. Then I'm coming to Sacramento on October 12th through the 14th. Arlington, Virginia the weekend after that. Baltimore, Houston, Bakersfield, Austin at the Mothership, just announcing this date now, uh, November 17th through the 19th. San Francisco, Fort Worth, and Atlanta. All Man, you're dates on the road at a lot. FitzDog.com. I'm hitting the road hard, baby. Got to make some Christmas dough. Hey, what do you think? The strike, uh, I guess it is sounding, and I, I'm choosing my words carefully, the most encouraging it sounded so far. I heard that, and then yesterday I heard that they didn't reach anything, but at least they we're closer. Yes, both sides. Because, you know, it's an old-school tactic of, uh, and they did this before, but the WGA called them out on it, is like you, one side will uh, leak to the press. It's very encouraging, yeah, even, right. even if it's not. Right. And then what happens is it makes the other guys look like bad guys when they're like, it's not, in, you know, or they walk away from the table or whatever it is. Right. Right. Um, so but this time it seemed like both sides were whistling the same tune, I think. Well, It'll let's hope so, because I am tired of walking that line. <laughs> uh, spe speaking of walking the line. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about, forget lines. Let's talk about wines. Mike? First Leaf used it. Personal endorsement, which is very true. Used it. It was great. They, uh, you take a little quiz. They kind of gauge what kind of wine you like. Uh, they, uh, you can rule out things. You can make it your own. And then once they, they hone in on it, they double check. Does this sound good? And then one of the cool things about it, because it's alcohol and someone has to sign for it, is you pick the delivery time. And it's not like a very big window or anything like that. Like it worked out so well, so convenient. They sent me six bottles of wine. All of them were really, I didn't know them. And so I had heard of one, but I had never tasted them. And they were all great. And they were like all in my wheelhouse, which I had defined for them. So I like kind of dry, earthy, full bodied. And, um, and that's exactly what came. And they, they were fantastic, and they make it so easy. They have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Um, and, yeah, mine were like Italian and some cabs that were in the spirit of Italian uh, wine. So it was great. Um, what else can I say about these guys? 
Well, um, give give your palate what it really wants with First Leaf. Go to tryfirstleaf.com slash papers to sign up, and you'll get your first six hand-curated bottles for just forty four ninety five. There you go. That's T-R-Y-F-I-R-S-T-L-E-A-F dot com slash papers. Tryfirstleaf.com slash papers. It's also, great. I mean, let's talk about, I mean, how did you get your tickets for Chappelle is the question. Game right now. time, because uh, remember I told you, I don't know if it was this podcast or the one that we uh, shit canned a little while ago, but I did mention that, you know, you're handing in your phones, the line was down the block and we waited it out. And that is exactly what game time was amazing for. I mean, it hadn't started yet, but you just watch the prices drop, drop, drop. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. And and then just waltzed right in. The tickets were there. It was fantastic. Dude, I'm looking at Ed Sheeran right now, who is was the top selling live artist last year in terms of gross. You can go see him for forty seven dollars right now in L.A. on October Whoa. 18th. Yeah. Um, for twice rock. that price, you can see RuPaul's Drag Race at the Grand Ole Opry House. Boy, has the Grand Ole Opry House changed. But that's October 15th, so Wait. it's not exactly game time yet. So um, Won't he be arrested for being in drag down there? That's a great question. I Because I'm pretty sure Tennessee has a no drag law. No, it absolutely does. Let's see what else is here. What sports is coming up? Let's see. And by the way, I did not dead name him. He goes by he. He identifies as he. Soldier Boy, thirty two bucks for Soldier Boy tonight. The A the Avid brothers who Judd Apatow did a great documentary about them. John Legend for sixty three bucks. And all these tickets I've been looking at, are, these are all down from where they were before. Anyway, so it's a fast and easy way. The app yep. is a piece of cake. A couple taps. You got it in your phone. You don't have to transfer. You don't have to download. You don't have to print. Well, I guess you download technically, but whatever. It's in your phone. Take yeah, a look at the an seats. Account and then use the code PAPERS, P-A-P-E-R-S, for $20 off your first purchase. There are terms that apply. You have to hit a minimum, but again, you create that account and you redeem code PAPERS for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, and guaranteed. All right, you know what else is guaranteed is that prize picks is going to give you a lot more fun when you watch sports than if you were not getting involved in choosing teams. Um, it's it's the best. It's like you, you instead of battling thousands of other players with sharks and pros and scammers, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections. Watch the winnings roll in. I did it. First of all, signing up was so much easier than I thought. Like, I really thought with a betting site that it would be hard to, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, get get everything Navigate connected. It, it was yeah. it, everything. Everything was so simple. You can you can no. you can bet on things like um, like uh, will 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 Saquon Barkley go for sixty yards or Patrick Mahomes for more than two passing touchdowns. Aaron, well, not Aaron Rodgers anymore. I know. They I should don't have a bet for how long up. he's going to be out for. Will he be back before the end of the season? He? Yeah, I'll tell you what. In this season, zero interceptions. So he right. went out a champ. That's right. right. He, hasn't been, he hasn't been sacked once. Right. But listen, you can make your picks and submit the entry in less than 60 seconds. They make it so easy. And they got these big things. Every Tuesday, they have a... Uh, they have a prize picks discount on selected player projections up to 25% to provide more value. Uh, you can use Apple Pay for quick, easy deposits yep. into your account. Um, the thing I do is this prize picks because well, I need it. I need it to be simple, as we know. And you can win up to 25 times your money. You just select two or more players and pick more or less on their projected stats and place your entry. And that's the one I love. So listen, go to prizepicks.com slash papers. You use code papers for a first deposit match of up to $100. Uh, go to prizepicks.com slash papers. Use code papers for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily, fa it's, I mean, look, I don't know what else to tell you. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports 
Made easy. Yeah. That's the baby. key. Thanks for extra. We all are Thanks for. Give me a crinkle on the front page, Mike. Let's here comes the front page, pal. Oh, all right, here I'm going to need go. you to read the setups because my voice is going and I have two shows tonight. What an opposite. My voice is strong today. Uh, over a hundred. And $10,000 has been raised for the California mom who had to have all her limbs amputated after eating bad <laughs> tilapia as a harrowing image of her in the hospital bed has emerged. Laura Baragas, 40, lost her arms and legs after eating the fish contaminated with a flesh-eating bacteria that she bought at a local market in July. It's Barajas, kind of ironic. Now, now she's like a fish. But what's that? Uh, what do you call? Yeah, what do you call? Well, what do you call a man with no arms and legs in a pool? What? Bob. Uh, Barajas what do you call, lives what do you with call, her. What do you call a woman with no arms, legs, or torso? Muffy. Uh, what do you call her? Muffy. Because <laughs> it's just her pussy. <laughs> what, do you, what, those... do you call a, what do you call a woman with no arms and no legs out in the middle of the ocean? Screw. Uh, what's. What's the other one? I was like, what do you call a man with, I don't know, with a set, I guess no arms and legs in a pile of leaves? Russell? Something like, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> Barajas lives what with do you say, What, oh, what do you say to a woman with no arms and no legs? Nice tits. <laughs> I thought it was want to lift. Barajas knock, lives with knock, her knock. six. Oh, Jesus. Yes, who's there? Not Sally. <laughs> <laughs> What do you call a Mexican woman with no legs? Uh, go ahead. Consuelo. <laughs> Just for the listeners, I'm reading it. It's cunts. Cunt is way low is what that joke was. <laughs> All right. We sorry. Don't, I, I don't have to you. read about her six year old son. No, right? it's None a, of your we jokes get it. apply to we it. We get it. Yeah. All right. So get this, though. I am starting, you know, I used to, you know, I've never, except that time when I ate, uh, I forget what fish it was in Jamaica and I got Sigiotera, I think is what they told me I had. I lost like fucking 25 pounds in a couple of days, but I lived and the doctor said I could have died. Wow. And it was from Barracuda. It was from Barracuda. I caught a Barracuda no when I was shit. down there playing rugby. Yeah. And, the, and they eat it. They eat it down there. So I'm like, I'll eat it too. And I ate with them, the guys I went fishing with anyway. Um, but this is a New York Times headline, and this was from uh, August 16th, so a month ago. Three die in New York area from infection spread through seawater and oysters. The bacteria are found in raw seafood like oysters and warm brackish waters. Climate change may increase the risk of infections from the deadly bacteria far, uh, farther north. So I read that, and this guy... Like it, it was just like this woman. Like you eat it, and it is fast acting. It's a flesh eating bacteria. Dude, I've always it's, heard tilapia. It's a bottom feeder, and in yeah. some countries, they actually farm it in uh, sewage ponds. Oh boy. Yes. So they sell it in like we used to get it from Costco. We eat that shit one night a week. We love tilapia. It's delicious. It's like a. It's like a nice, juicy, spongy white fish, Ugh. but it is it is bad. Don't eat tilapia. Uh, luckily, they're not a sponsor. The um, yeah, I don't know, man. I might, you know, oysters always were like really like I know. maybe if it was less expensive. Yeah, but it's like I don't know the whole aphrodisiac dumb shit, and I, I don't know. I think maybe with the warming oceans and everything, I, it's just not worth it. No. Neither are babies. Let's read this next one. Oh, here we go. Let's. What is this next one? Oh, nice headline. Greg put in abort with an exclamation point. A Nebraska mother was accused of helping her 17-year-old da daughter have an illegal abortion and disposing of the fetus was sentenced to two, just two years in prison on Friday. Should be nine the months. The sentence comes after Jessica, Jessica Burgess, 42, pleaded guilty in July to two felonies, removing, and removing, concealing, or abandoning a dead human body and performing an abortion beyond 20 weeks 
and a misdemeanor charge of false reporting. She also parked at a uh, yellow curb for more than 20 minutes, and they got her on that, too. <laughs> Burgess's daughter, Celeste Burgess, now 19, was sentenced in July to 90 days in jail after pleading guilty to a felony charge of removing, concealing, and abandoning a dead human body. Um, authorities allege that Celeste had a medication abortion and that it violated the state's prohibition of abortion after 20 weeks. Celeste Burgess was around 28. Eight, ugh, dude, that's far. Weeks pregnant when her Damn. pregnancy ended. Okay. I guess. I mean, the mom's forty-two. I guess some women at that age just don't want to be grandmas, like badly, like really yeah. badly. Yeah. Or they want to be the worst grandma in the world. <laughs> does she get that? Does she get that mug now? <laughs> right, right, worst grandma. <laughs> but what's funny is that like she got in trouble for disposing. Of the fetus, so so if would their charges have been less if she'd kept the fetus, like put it in a jar on the mantle? Yeah, the law is weird that way. In I lieu remember, of a baby picture, I might have told this. This is unrelated, but uh, the way like lawyers think. So uh, in the in my high school, this guy had a rich dad who was a very successful lawyer. So he got in trouble in our school because. He saw this cool picture, like in a magazine. Keep in mind, it's, just, it's, it's not a book. It was a magazine in the library. And he tore out the page because he was going to put it like in his dorm room on the wall. It was like a surfing picture or something. So they wanted to make an example out of him. So they gave him two infractions, one for stealing and one for vandalism. Oh and, my he was God. and he was complaining to his dad about it. And his dad, I guess, has seen this a million times. He's like... Well, this is the lesson they just taught you. Next time, take the whole magazine. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. So it's like the law sometimes works that way where it's uh, like, you know, it's like, well, yeah, I mean, you're kind of encouraging them like not to dispose of it, I guess. Yeah. So maybe um, they just leave it in their front yard on a stick. Here's the other thing about this story is uh, like, a baby notoriously destroys a woman's body, stretches out the insides, the tits. There's postpartum depression. You get insomnia. I mean, the the thing is coming for you. So, that's why my that's why my nickname for my stuff is the baby. The baby. Yeah. That's I why. Ruin but, I ruin them. But isn't Nebraska a stand your ground state? It, wouldn't that be? Can't you contest that as you're standing your ground against being attacked? <laughs> <laughs> you should be a lawyer. That's what we're learning. <laughs> I don't know what this world isn't right if you're not uh, practicing law. Let's go to Baltimore. You got not it, Not literally, but unfortunately I will be soon. At least 13 Baltimore City High School. Oh, no, sorry. Start again. At 13 Baltimore City High Schools, zero students tested proficient <laughs> on a state <laughs> math exam. The latest round of state results is uh, raising alarm in Baltimore City schools. Project Baltimore found that 40%, which when they're reading this headline, they have no idea if that's high or low, <laughs> found that 40% of Baltimore high school stu schools where the state exam was given did not have any students score proficient in math. Not one student. But that not, that's not the only alarming finding. In those 13 high schools, 1,700 students took the test and 1,300 students, or 74.5%, scored one out of four. One is the lowest level, meaning those students were not even close to proficient. Well, I guess on October 23rd, when I'm at Magoobies in Baltimore, <laughs> I better dumb it down a little bit. Did I tell you the last time I worked there? And by the way, it's a great club. Magoobies kicks ass and it is fun i'm making fun of baltimore because that's the story but obviously they're stupid would you live that close to philadelphia if you weren't stupid uh, so uh, uh. I, I go there and on the friday night show i'm selling my pins after the show and this guy comes out and he's kind of like this hippy dippy dude he's got a long beard and tie dye and he goes hey man i brought you something and he hands me a baggie with a hit of lsd in it and i was like yeah. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Keep it moving. And so the feature act sees us and he goes, hey, man, can I have it? I was like, dude, you're not going to take this. He's like, I'm fucking. And he puts it right in his mouth. 
and cut to the next night, Saturday night show. The kid shows up fucking glassy eyed and out of it. He's like, dude, there's something wrong with that. I'm still fucked up. He like couldn't remember his jokes on stage. He was totally fucking dazed. How long after? A day. Like oh, 24 man. hours later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, LSD I, I can fuck you up it. for weeks. Yeah, I would never take a blind. Oh, my God. I yeah. mean, meanwhile, I have. But, I mean, the idea was they were trusted, and I did with other people. All right, so I like looked that. this up because cause I, I just remember that Baltimore has certain words. Obviously, like, everybody talks about warder. They say warder. Okay, and, yeah. And they pronounce it ball, ball more, ball more. So right. I'm going to give you I'm going to give you eight or nine words. All right. In Balt in Balmorese and you're going to tell right. me what those words really are. Okay, okay, I'm not looking. All right, go ahead. All right. A I G. What does that mean? Those are the letters. I'm going to give you the letters and then you tell me what the real word is. These are the pronunciations. These letters are the actual oh, this, pronunciations. So A-I-G is the phonetic spelling yes, of a word? right. I'm going to give you a the phonetic age. spelling of the words. A age? Like how old are you? No, egg. Ah, oh, okay. Egg. Egg. All right. A-R-N. Murder. Huh? A-R-N. Aren't, aren't you gonna? I'm in the South. I don't know. What is it? It's uh, iron. 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 It's iron. Iron. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this one you should read. Read the third one yourself and pronounce oh, it. All right. D O W N E Y. Second word. A Y S H I N. I mean, it sounds. It looks like uh, phonetically, it's Downey Ashen. Yeah. What is it? What is it in Baltimoreese? Balmoreese. Downey. Uh, uh, it, I don't. Downey. I don't know. Down, down at the ocean. <laughs> uh, F -L well, it's like the Philly accent. It's terrible. F L A R. Flar, fl flar. Uh, I, I, I keep going southern. I don't know what flar is. Fl well, flower? it is. They flower. say yes. They say it has a lot of southern accent on it. Okay. Um, Huskel, Huskel. Yeah. How's how school? How's school? High school. High school. Okay. In uh, it. A i n i t. In it. What is uh, what is it in English? Idiot. Isn't it? Uh in it. All yeah. right. Yeah. G, J e e t. Jeet jeet jeet. Um, it's gonna be. Oh yeah. Did you eat? Yep, that's right. Sure. Uh, P L E E S E. Police? Huh? Or police. Yeah, police. Yeah, man, I'm getting right. it now. Yeah, I saw the wire, man. Come on. Yeah, baby. Baltimore. Where would you put the wire in the top ten shows of all time? Would it be I, in your? I top just 10? lied. I just lied. I haven't seen the wire. I've seen oh, the first wow. two seasons. Dude, it's so and I love it. Good. And it's and this so and this good. is related to this story. Uh, everyone, there are many, many critics who think season four of the wire, which took place, you know, it rotated somewhere in the newspaper, somewhere at the docks. Doc. season two was docks. And some, a lot of people said that was a tough one. Like that's not the best one. Uh, season four takes place in the Baltimore school system. Unbelievable. And the New York times I know is one that thinks it's the best season of uh, TV ever. That's funny because my favorite season of Breaking Bad, which I'm rewatching right now, I'm on episode five, oh, wow. is season four. Season four. That's quite some writing when the best season can be season four. Right. I mean, well, I think a lot of that lot. has to do with the writers getting to know the actors and being able to write for the actors better and better as they and the actors are developing the writing. It's a it's it's a confluence. It's it's symbiotic. Meanwhile, AI is like listening to us like that. You know what? Well, uh, season one is going to be the best from now on. We got we got we're yeah. moving four up to right. one. We're not taking right. that long. Let's All get right, to let's... some drunk fucking monkeys. man. Yeah. Yeah. 
Why extreme, did we not? Why was this not our first story? I don't know. I I love extreme gene therapy for alcoholism slashes drinking by ninety percent in monkeys. A form of gene therapy that is already being trialed in patients with Parkinson's disease might pr provide a one-off treatment for severe alcohol addiction. A study in, is it MAC? Macaque? Macaque, that's what it is. Macaque, it sounds, what is macaque? It sounds <laughs> it's, like. That's, that's Baltimore for my cock. <laughs> oh, macaque's been drinking. A study in macaque monkeys that were predisposed to heavy drinking found that it dramatically curbed their alcohol consumption. Drinking went down to almost zero, said this professor. Uh, for months on end, these animals would choose to drink water and just avoid drinking alcohol altogether. Quitters, just like you, Greg. Wait, so how are monkeys going to put jeans on? And how does that stop drinking? <laughs> Usually people put on jeans, they drink more. That's when you're heading out. Wait, what is the jeans thing? Oh, the uh, gene therapy? Gene therapy, yeah. Really I like it, I like maybe it. Maybe one of the worst jokes I've ever done on Sunday papers. By the way, they also, the cause, you might be wondering why these macaques are drinking so much. Cause of the macaques' alcoholism, just their general despondency about all the electrodes on their skull. <laughs> J just boring <laughs> right into their brain. Just give me another whiskey. Give me another whiskey, for God's sakes. Um, but they say that it is, it is working for people with Parkinson's disease. Does that mean they're drinking less as well? Or are the people with Parkinson's just spilling their martinis more? <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> Go back to the uh, monkeys putting jeans on. At least it's a fun image. All right. We got a pilot in the house. Let's Here hear we about go. it. The pilot of a U.S. Marine's F-35 jet that went missing. Remember that story last yeah, week? Yeah, a very expensive jet. The guy just bailed, <laughs> man. He, yeah. just, he just jettisoned himself out of that thing. I uh, went missing. So he called emergency services from a South Carolina home where his parachute landed. In an audio from the call, the pilot told the dispatcher that he was, quote, not sure where the 80, no, $100 million plane was. And in the four-minute call to 911, the resident of the North Charleston home can be heard telling a confused dispatcher that, quote, we got a pilot in the house. <laughs> I guess he landed in my backyard. We're trying to see if he could get an ambulance to the house, please. He's, the been, anally, he's been anally probing me. Is this an alien? The 47-year-old pilot, who has not been named, said that he felt okay after ejecting at approximately 2,000 feet. Only his back hurt. I mean, well, that is in South Carolina. There's no doubt that guy thought it was an alien. That it, we got an ET in the house. <laughs> <laughs> we got a pilot in the house. You know, that's fine. My husband often comes home from the bars, parks right on the lawn, and leaves it running. <laughs> so you're better than that. Right. <laughs> and then, first of all, I love that he said that he felt okay. I mean, I don't know if after losing a $100 million plane, you should publicly state that you feel okay. At the very least, you should say, I feel guilty. I feel ejected. I feel like a pussy for ejecting. Yeah. Well, this is probably his logic. Like, you know, I feel okay, especially considering I'm at the house where the plane didn't land, and it's it's <laughs> it's going to land. It's probably landing right now. I'm not going to feel okay when I see the photos of where it does land. Yeah. Now they found debris. I don't. I I didn't follow up on that story. I don't know where they found it, but I mean, I I, I should know more about this story. I really don't. I don't know why he ejected. At 2,000 feet, though, that is low. What if it turns out, like, his wife is like, yeah, he, he ejects early a lot. <laughs> I could have told you this was going to happen. He never. <laughs> he, he never stays in the cockpit as long as he should. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> that, guy, that guy has an aversion to cockpits, man. I don't know what's up with that guy. Yeah, there's a lot of oil leaks in our bed. I think he just likes the Navy uniform, and uh, I don't really know if he's into women. Yeah. Uh, he all right, are we going to entertainment? Yeah.
Okay, I did not see this story. You put this in this morning? No, a couple days ago. Huh. Bijou Phillips Masterson has filed for divorce from husband Danny Masterson over a week after he was sentenced to 30 years to life in prison for raping two women. <laughs> Oh my God. Phillips filed a petition to end their 11 year marriage. Uh, she cited irreconcilable differences. She requested spousal support as well as restoration of her name to Bijou Phillips and full custody of their daughter. The two were married October 2011 and share a nine year old daughter together. Phillips stood by Masterson throughout his two trials. She wept when the guilty verdicts were read on May 31st when a judge handed down the maximum sentence allowed by law. Masterson will be eligible for parole after serving 25 and a half years. I think the extra half year was for the eighth season of that 70s show. <laughs> you know, I saw a uh, meme. Uh, the 70s show started to fire up memes, like just in general. And this one had nothing to do with the rape. But it did occur to me, like one of the things people in Hollywood think about like I have a lot of friends on Family Guy, right? And they're played all over the world. Residual checks come, it's called mailbox money. Residual checks come in because they're making money and selling Family Guy and their work is being sold in new markets. And they can rely on that for the, you know, the foreseeable future and maybe the rest of their lives, unless like Seth does something atrocious and gets canceled. No, no, I'm saying that's one that like, that's the only thing that could happen. Oh, so, oh that'll stop the show. Right. Right. Like, for instance, back to the 70s show, like that bald dad who's a really funny actor. Um, he was in something else on Amazon. I'm forgetting Patriots, something like that. Anyway, he's really good actor. Um, he was counting on those residuals probably for the rest of his life from that 70s show. Yeah. Gone. Right. That well, show's being pulled off the air. He was on another, yeah, he was on another sitcom, and wasn't he the father in a movie? There was a movie that he was in. Denman, what's the guy's name? Here he goes. I think it was Kurt Patriot. Wood Smith, right. Uh, yeah. He was in great in a movie called Cedar Rapids. Yes, ah. that was a good fucking movie. Um, so... First of all, can things get worse for Bijou Phillips? She grew up, her father was John Phillips from Mamas and the Papas, who actively had sex with her sister Mackenzie for years. Oh. It was a crazy sexual relationship where I'm not saying by any means it was consensual, but it was ongoing while she was like a late teenager. It was Why weird. would you even bring up the word consensual? Well, I just mean he wasn't holding her down and raping her every time. It became like a weird psychodynamic, which oh. happens sometimes. Got it. Uh, yeah, I should not have even... That word should be nowhere near this description of what it was. Now this but, podcast is going to get canceled because of you. Oh, I've been Jesus. counting on all the residuals for the rest of my life. <laughs> but here's what I don't get about... Something's going on here. I think... And I have read nothing about this. The story was new to me. I mean, obviously, I knew about the conviction and all that. I knew she stood by his side. But I'm not even trying to be funny. So she was with him when he's an accused rapist. He, she totally believes he's innocent. Goes to the two trials. But now that he, in her mind, is wrongly convicted and he is an innocent man going to jail, that's when she leaves him? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Do you, did, do you think it was calculated? Like they sat down with an accountant and they're like, the best scenario is if she divorces you, maybe you don't pay tax on, I'm just trying to think it through. Like It might firewall I, her from uh, civil litigation. That's right. true. Right. Right. I, yeah. bet, I bet Danny is part of this decision. Yeah. Also, I think Danny would say, look, f to be fair to you, I'm going to be gone for the rest of my life, basically. Go have a life. Go continue your her life. I don't know if you know about her, but at she grew up 
pretty rich. I think I forget what her parents did. Well, her her father was John Wilson. I think her mother was also very rich, and she grew up. At 13, she like left private school to go model, and she lived alone in an apartment in the village where she just did fucking drugs, oh, and wow. it ha- and crazy. Like was in rehab, was like got sober by the age of 18, and just has lived this fucking crazy life. Yeah. And then the whole thing with her sister came out. I don't know if she was aware of it while she was younger, but um, you know, she had a she had a musical career. She was a very successful actress. She's done a ton of great shit. Almost famous. She was in that. Um, so, what? Just crazy life. Yeah, no doubt. Well, Masterson is not known for putting uh, women and what they want first. So maybe he's not in on this decision. <laughs> right, uh, right. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Um, but he's appealing. Yeah. So he's appealing. She wouldn't stay with him through the appeals. I don't know. I'd like to. I'd like to know more. I bet Tom O'Neill knows. Well, if he was All so right. if he was so appealing, she wouldn't leave him. He never had to rely on his appeal to women. Right. He relied uh, on force. So a meme suggesting Pauly Shore could play Richard Simmons has been circulating the internet. So Pauly Shore stirred the pot and posted this photo and caption. So it's a photo of them next to each other. They really do look similar. And they're both in like a namaste, uh, hands together uh, pose. And then, quote, I've noticed the reactions to me playing Richard Simmons in a biopic. I heard he's living in Big Bear. We've been playing phone tag. Yes, he has a phone. I'm trying to make it happen, you guys. In the meantime, hit up all the big producers. I'll see you at the Academy 2025. Paulie Shore. I would say that is, yeah, the people on Twitter definitely have the most juice with the producers. Hit up the big producers. Jimbo living in his parents' basement in Milwaukee. <laughs> all right. So after this, a massive online response to all this and the coverage, which was on the, in the Hollywood Reporter, TMZ, the New York Post, everywhere, uh, a representative for Richard Simmons reached out to Pauly and said, despite his love for Mitzi and Pauly, he'd rather not participate and, enjoy, and he'd rather enjoy a quiet life. Huh. Mark yep. Maron was upset when he heard the news. He did a 17 minute monologue about how he used to do coke with Richard Mitzi and Sam and Paulie didn't earn it. Wow. Is this true or is this a joke? I don't know. He said Paulie didn't earn it. What does that mean? It's a joke. Oh, See, it's a joke. All right. That's Denman. a joke. It's close Maybe, to hey, home. Denman. It's very hey, believable. Very write, believable. Right. It's a joke first. Next time. Don't, don't make me read it like it's serious. I mean, we, we, this is a, this is a journalistic show. Yeah. All right. Um, it's Make, very believable. I could, I could hear Mark Marin doing that. I, me and Mark had an argument in the hallway of the comedy store the other night, but it's not an argument. He and I really poke each other because we, we've known each other since college and yeah. we lived in New York together. We've lived in L.A. together. Same manager. And we know each other extremely well. But we also torture each other. And we were going at it in the hallway. And Whitney Cummings videotaped it. And she put it on her Instagram. And uh, and then after she videotaped it, she goes, wow, you guys, you guys really love each other. And she meant it. And she was right. Like, we really do, underneath it all, love each other. There you go. But he drives me crazy. He yeah, drives me crazy. Like a lover would. All right, let's make America Florida. All right, Miami. A South Florida man was shot by police. Why? Because to celebrate the state's <laughs> new open carry gun law, he was firing his rifle into the air. What, what is he? What is this? Is he Toucan Sam? <laughs> I'm even surprised <laughs> officers responded to this, but officers did respond to an apartment complex on July 7th where they found a man here in body armor firing a gun into the air. So did he think the air was going to shoot back? Like, 
<laughs> Why do you wear body armor to go fire a gun in the air unless you're expecting trouble? Uh, witnesses later told officers that the man claimed he was celebrating the new law that went into effect on the 1st of July. An officer who showed up ordered the man to stop shooting and to show his hands. So what did he do? He tried to run away. <laughs> The man turned, why? You weren't doing anything illegal. The man turned his body toward the officer while trying to enter an apartment, and the officer opened fire, striking the man several times. The man was taken to a local hospital where he was being treated until his arrest. (laughs) So he shoots at the sky, cops shoot at him. I mean, here's the thing about open carry. You just got the right... Cops have been doing it for a hundred years. They're going to win. Cops are pretty good at it. I mean, what's Uh, the thing about shooting bullets in the air? Don't they, they have to come down. Do they ever land on people when they come down? No, they do. There's famous, there's famous cases of like a kid, uh, in a house, even getting killed by bullets coming down. I mean, clearly, it, if you're, you know, in Compton or if you're in a super crowded, I'm trying to remember, I think it was in, it might have been like in the hood in L.A. I'm trying to remember the story, but it doesn't matter. If you're in an intensely populated urban area, uh, your chances go way up, you know. But, but I think a lot of those are fired sideways. But when you go to like <laughs> Afghanistan where they're always shooting in the air or Mexico, they shoot in the air. Um, happens every New Year's Eve in St. Louis. This is serious, not a joke, Greg. Oh, Don't Jesus. read that as a joke. I mean, no, no, people people firing in the air, it's a hazard. Trust me, people have been injured. Fact, no doubt about it. That's shooting crazy. in the air. Jesus. There's a lot more shooting in the air in L.A. than you think. There really is. Yeah. Like if the Lakers win, forget about it. They're acting like Baltimore over there. Wait, I'm dying to hear your great joke. Mike spent about 12 minutes writing jokes for the script this week because we write them underneath the story. That might be twice and here's, as much time. He, here's, here's, Mike's, here's Mike's fucking killer joke for Make America Florida. Just what Florida needs. That was going to lead to this guy out there in body armor. It was a setup, but that's why I don't like Google Docs. You don't need to see my setup. <laughs> setup to what? It didn't go anywhere. That's what happens sometimes. <laughs> That's all I uh, need. You're going to put that in your, your next writing package for uh, Will Farrell. There's a setup. What should the joke be? Just what Florida needs. What do we got? A. Well, I was thinking, the, I was really referring to the open gun law, open carry gun law. Yeah. Uh, there's a joke there. Send them in next week. Just what Florida needs, dot, dot, dot. Oh, you're dot. freezing. No, oh, you're back. Uh, okay. Here we go. I know I'm worried about this connection again. We're going to make Australia, Florida. This is the most perfectly Australian uh, news story. A Gold Coast man who was uh, who filmed himself taking his pet snake for a surf has been fined by Australian wildlife authorities. Higor Fioza. Uh, and his Bradley Carpet Python became local celebrities earlier this month after a video of them catching waves went viral. But their short-lived fame also tipped off wildlife protection officers. They said the man endangered the snake and breached his permit to keep the snake by taking her out in public. They issued him a fine of 1500 bucks. Taking native pets out in public can cause them unnecessary stress and could make them behave in an unpredictable way, the officer said. Snakes are obviously cold-blooded animals, and while they can swim, reptiles generally avoid water, he said. The python would have been found would have found the water to be extremely cold, and the only snakes that should be in the ocean are sea snakes. Uh, yeah, I think it's much more humane to... You know, lock them in a goldfish tank with tanning lamps on them while your drunk friends pound on the glass and yell at them. And throw white mice at them. Yeah. Uh, But also, it's as if snakes express joy. I understand you're in Hawaii and you bring your dog out there and maybe you could (laughs) argue your dog's enjoying it and there might be evidence that looks like that. What? Uh, what is this? The snake also, as I said, it was probably freaking out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and even if it's not, how, how can you, it's not enjoying it. 
They like trees. This is the opposite of a tree. There's nothing to grab onto. And talk about being mocked. I mean, everyone's screaming, hang 10. The <laughs> fucking snake has no digits. Zero <laughs> digits. One of the only animals with no right, digits. Right. He's hanging zero. Yeah. Uh, yeah, of course he's going to find the water cold. He's been under a fucking heat lamp for the last 15 years. Oh, my God. All right, let's head, let's head to sports. Colorado's all right. So did you watch Deion Sanders and Boulder last week? I don't watch college football because I, I have a hard enough time remembering the players and the pros. I can't I can't like learn fifty teams with forty players each every year that changes. But I did read about Deion Sanders when he was coaching that team in Mississippi and he took like a completely destroyed sports program in a impoverished school and yes. he made them national champs and then he fucking left and then and, yeah. and then i was done then i was done with dion yeah jackson state and uh he um and it was a show coach prime i think it's on amazon and it's like a last chance you where you're taking this junior college or community college anyway so the game do you know he has two sons playing for the team oh, yeah i heard that one both on offense, of them scored one on defense. Both of them scored touch. Well, obviously the quarterback is this maniac. So they had four minutes left. They were down by eight, and he was on the two yard line. Went all the way down the field, and then they can touch down and converted two to send it to the first overtime. And then there were two overtimes. Anyway, they're playing Oregon, and they're supposed to get shellacked by Oregon today, like, like right now, I think. And. Yeah. Um, I think Oregon is a 20, maybe a 20 point favorite or something like that. So you're saying it would be a good bet to take the less on this one. I don't know. Oh, their best player is out. Travis. Who's Hunter. best player? Oregon's best player. No, Colorado. Oh, no, that's not good. Anyway, but, uh, the reports, we don't have to go into it because we're not really sports guys, but the reports are amazing because every he is the story and he's also changing college. Uh, I think we talked about last week, college football. Like it's it's like showtime now. Um, you know, rappers coming in, singing at the beginning of the oh, game. Oh, I heard about that. Yeah. Who came in? Uh, what's his name? Actually, uh, is he out of Philly? Who, Lil who, Wayne. Who, Lil, Lil Wayne. Wayne. Yeah. Damn, the rock was there. Yeah. It's it's really it it is like the Lakers, the Lakerization of college football. And but the millions that are pouring into Boulder, like even the Wall Street Journal, I think, did an article on like it's not only the TV rights, which they want to show it every week now, but the amount like the stadium, it was pathetic. They had such a losing record just a year ago. And now the stadium is packed every when I go to Michigan um, to see Sophie, my daughter, and we and it's when there's a Michigan home game, I wind up staying closer and closer to Detroit. Every single room is sold out on home game weekends. Wow, that's incredible. Every Jesus. restaurant, you cannot get a reservation. It's it's unbelievable. Well, they were talking about Taylor Swift going, she's in Australia right now, I think, and that the towns have to have meetings for urban planning to accommodate the amount of people that are coming in and the amount of business that's being generated. It's not just the ticket sales, like whole towns are you know living off of her visiting for a week it's almost like sturgis has to prepare for all the old guys just wiping out <laughs> what business would you set up in sturgis if you wanted to make some money every year padding probably padding for any turn on a road <laughs> i mean the city should buy that if they want less less deaths have you been going out there and pouring oil on the uh turns <laughs> And separating riders from their bikes, yeah, and their helmets, yeah. Uh, exactly. Let's let's do some international. Yeah. All right, my inner 
the computer just told me my internet connection is unstable. Oh boy. Sort of like my pod. It also said my podcast partner is unstable. <laughs> Somehow it knows that. All, All right, right. I'll read this one. A pack of dogs, of dog identifying humans. There's a new uh, one. What happened to them? I want something bad to happen to them already. I haven't even read this article. Go ahead has prompted calls for animal control after footage of their meetup went viral and um, an estimated 1000 people who prefer to be recognized as not humans, but canines organized a gathering in Berlin, communicating only by howling or barking at one another. Can you imagine like somebody walking a real dog past this gathering of Germans on all fours, barking and howling to each other? Uh. Do you think, do you think like he'd try to he'd try to like fuck one of them or smell their asses or I have no by the way, my internet, I literally didn't hear anything you just oh, said. Oh, it was hilarious. It was a great riff. Uh is this Germany? This is Germany, Berlin. Of course. Yeah. Freaks. So I think they they all these people, to to be fair. To be fair, you know, they knew they were going in a public place, so all of them got COVID shots and uh, and rabies shots. So at least they were being conscientious. Um, I mean, this is Germany. I mean, where's the part of the story where they're all getting fucked doggy style? <laughs> right, right. Isn't that what this is all about? Yeah, I think it's all foreplay. And I, I mean, I guess it's... It's kind of like those people that dress up as animals and then they get together. That all leads to fucking. I know that. This would have been a good move back in the 30s. Like, no, no, I am not. How can I be Jewish? I'm a dog. <laughs> in fact, I'm a German shepherd. I am, I'm right. the opposite of a Jew. Right. I'm a German shepherd. Right, right. Um, and by the way, like, I guess there would be no latrines. They would just they'd pee. How do you pee on a tree? Somebody must have done it. Somebody must have been on all fours and raised their leg and peed on a tree. Yeah, of course. That's how you have to be convincing. Yeah. All right, I'm trying to fix Wi-Fi as we talk here. All right, uh, let's get to um, let's get to letters to the editor. Give me right, a crinkle. Let's wrinkle it. Here it goes. Wrinkle. Okay, this comes from uh, I don't know. I forgot to write their name down. Yay, yay, for an in-person episode. And Mike, we females are not thinking about the royal family oh. when it comes to topics thought about by women versus by men. Unfortunately, what us females find ourselves dwelling on is our physical appearance. While men, I understand, conveniently and ironically, get to think about what else? Women's physical appearance. I got to say. Especially Roman women. I dead right. And I love the sentence structure. This was kind of a, a layered, interesting sentence structure. Um, yeah, it's true. I mean, how much do women think about men's physicality versus men thinking about women's physicality? It's about 40% more, I think. Yeah. I mean, like, listen, it's like dick pics versus dirty pictures that a woman would send like the reaction could not be more different right and also the women you see beautiful women with guys that not just are rich but some guys just have a great sense of humor or ha or exude amazing confidence or have a charm and you see beautiful women go with them but guys there's very little that factors in except for looks yeah some comedian I just saw, and I'm not going to get this right at all, but he goes, you know, the, in terms of the double standard, he's like, it was something like the most disgusting thing, like you could whisper, uh, like sexually to a, a strange woman, like in a, the passing her on the street, uh, would be the biggest turnoff, and she, she would maybe get furious and all this. And if it was reversed, most guys would be like, uh, I'm listening. <laughs> Yeah. Like right, right. I'll I'll hear more about that. Where, where are you where are we going with this? Yeah. Um another guy Bruce Eaton, I did I talked about Aaron and I's trip to Escondido where I am right yeah. now. We were here last week and we spent a few nights. All we had to do was go to a 90 minute uh infomercial uh where a salesman tried to sell us a timeshare. And of course, it turned into 3 hours. 
And of course, my wife, who I said before the meeting, my wife. I said, we're not doing this. My wife, I said, we're not doing this. She is such a sucker. It's so funny because she grew up in New York City and you just think that she'd be a little bit more like discerning. And by the end of it, she's like, this is a good idea. And I was like, uh, so anyway, some this guy, Bruce Eaton, sent me a link to a John Oliver story. And look it up. If you're interested in any way in a timeshare, look up John Oliver show and timeshare scam. It is not like, you know, Joe's timeshare company in Tijuana. It's the Hyatt. It's the Hilton. It's the major hotel chains. They've got 60-year-old people on the chain for $200,000 that have never been able to secure a booking because they're all booked up. They want you to up. First of all, you're not getting any bookings. And they say the way to get them is you got to upgrade, which is another $30,000 that you owe. And then the ma- and then the maintenance fee that you pay yearly goes up. So you're paying upwards of like $2,000 a year. First of all, you're only getting a week. What's a week into 2000? You could spend $2,000 on any hotel. You could get a hotel anywhere in the world for $2,000 for a yeah. week. Um, no, and, then, and then there's these companies. What's even worse, there's these companies. They're called exit companies. And you hmm. go to them. And they're supposed to extricate you from the contract, which the contracts, there's a secondary market when people want to get out of these contracts and you can't find anybody in those secondary markets. You literally have to give up sometimes it's anywhere between twenty and forty thousand dollars people are paying to have the timeshare. And you have to get you have to lose that money and just say, Will you take over the yearly payments? And you get the nights in the hotel. So there's these companies that help you get out. And they are fly-by-night organizations that take another seven or eight grand from people. And then they disappear. And they (laughs) prey on these people that are already getting fucked. Oh, my God. Brutal story. John Oliver, man, I got to tell you something. He does some good, deep exposés. Oh, it's it's like an hysterical 60 minutes. Right. Right. It's it's that well researched. It's incredible. <clears throat> it I, I thought you were gonna say it would be quite a feat if the uh, if the timeshare companies set up exit companies. So now right, right. you're also paying them to get out of their own contract. Yeah. Right. Um, um, that's all terrible. Right. Let's get to let's go worse. Let's go to the obituaries. And that's all, folks. You got it, pal. All right. All right. So we got this guy. Uh, you want to talk about this guy from um, Billy Williams? Uh, what do we got here? Chris. Oh, there's a soap star. Oh, no, no. So what happened was this. We had a good week, everybody. Maybe we should just celebrate it. That no really well-known person, very well-known person, died this week. So we didn't. Haven't you normally put the obituary in, uh, Greg? And you didn't, but I do know that guy Angus Cloud. He didn't die this week, but uh, the actor from um, what was it? HBO's uh, Euphoria. Euphoria. He uh, they found out the cause of death, and the guy I guess was struggling with substances, and he had everything in him, like cocaine, fentanyl, everything. His dad had died the week earlier, and he just I don't know if he relapsed or if he just turned it on. And maybe even tried to kill himself. But that was really sad. Because that was my favorite character in Euphoria, actually, which my daughter made me watch. He Was, was his the, character in Euphoria also a drug addict? Oh, yeah. He was the drug dealer. Oh, wow. And by the way, Euphoria, I think we talked about it. But even if you've never seen it, go watch, uh, put on episode one of season two. And it's a very Scorsese-like dare I say it, a very Scorsese confident open to that show. And it is act, it is the story of this guy, Angus, his character and how he was created. But he's he, such a real guy. He's not an actor, I think. And they they found him. Oh, I yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've only seen a few episodes of this show, but uh, yeah, I really liked that guy. That's a shame. I didn't know he died. He was really, yeah, he, had really some, he had a really, he had a really good quality about him. He did. I mean, he was kind of like really like like flatlined a little bit, but there was something magnetic at the same time. 
He was discovered at a gas station, uh, Chris just wrote in there. Wow, no shit. Jesus, I, I got to start going to gas stations more. All right, well, let's cheer up and go to the funnies. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, so go. here's Hag of the Horrible. Once again, you know, what are comic strips in a newspaper for? It's to get the kids involved. Hey, kids, why don't you read some of these colorful, animated little characters? So here's Lucky. And Hagger, and they're walking out of a castle, and they've got sacks full of money. And uh, and then a woman who's dressed in an evening gown and pearls says, Hey, you forgot one. And then they uh, open the bag that she's carrying, and, 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 he's, and there's a, the Duke is in there. And Hagger goes, Duke, first of all, if you're a woman in medieval <laughs> times and you've been raided, you're not playing little games you're not handing things to them. You're fucking trembling in a wine cellar in the basement, holding a knife, praying to God you're not gang raped. Is this what you want your children reading in the Sunday paper? <laughs> All right. Mike it's kind of a comment. medieval uh, rape kit that she gave him, meaning that, <laughs> hey, you can rape my husband on the road. Here's a little right. kit. Right, right. He's, in, a, he's in this pouch. Here's the Duke. He's cute. Um, yeah. Lockhorns are in a uh, health and beauty section of a store, and uh, Loretta is looking at some lotion. L- Leroy's behind her, and he goes, you want to look younger? Just get older friends. Good solid joke. It's a good theory. A lot of people use that theory, especially women. Is that true? Superficial women. Uh, yeah, I think there's like me. I mean, I think there's jokes, and but I think there's some truth to like... It feels good to be the best looking in a group of girls. It is interesting how women cluster. Like when we, when you see women out, they, they if if this is gonna sound really sexist, but if women oh, I, I'm are a certain it. body type, they tend to cluster together. You don't see a mixture like, like guys, fat, skinny, tall, whatever. They all hang out together. Women try to try to stay within a point of each other. Sevens hang out together. Nines hang out together. Am I wrong? I think you might be. I think sometimes they like a heavy friend around. Well, you remember our friend who I think we've both said is maybe the most beautiful woman we've ever known. And her best friend was a, a, a larger person. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah. Yep. Um, all right, so now on to the far side. We'll get away from that area. I think you're digging yourself a hole. Far side. <laughs> it's this guy a sitting on hole. a plane. A fucking big one. This guy's sitting on a plane. They're way up in the sky. You can see out the window. He has a window seat, and he has his hand on his armrest, and then there's a panel of buttons, and the caption says, fumbling for his reclined button, Ted unwittingly instigates a disaster. So now you see his hand, and here are the buttons. There's a light button. There's a call button for the, uh, you know, the flight attendant. There's a volume button, and then there's a red switch. And the red switch has an on and off position, and it says, "Wings stay on, wings <laughs> fall off." <laughs> That's the red button, and all you have to do is flip it. It's not protected. There's not like a little plastic case over it to make sure that you won't touch it accidentally. And the wings fall off is the down position, which is going to happen. That's hilarious. Yeah. Here's what's not hilarious. Fucking Dagwood. And he's guy. He's in the kitchen and he's got his tongue sticking out of the side of his mouth while he makes a sandwich, splattering mustard all over the place, which who's cleaning that up? Not fucking Dagwood. And, and so his daughter walks in. Oh, no, his son walks in with a girlfriend. And she goes, you're a real artist, Mr. Bumstead. Do you mind if I take a picture? And he goes, not at all. And then uh, she goes, I'm having trouble getting the entire sandwich in the frame. And he goes, do you want me to take a couple of bites? Now, the comic strip is, the, 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 fuck the lines. Look at the tits on the girlfriend. This what guy. is with this artist? He is the most perverted. I mean, one thing is, 
Blondie is Blondie. It's the way she was born. There's nothing she can do about it. But he has created this girlfriend with this tight little ass. Look at her thighs in those jeans. And she's got bosoms just exploding out of her. I mean, does this guy draw and then masturbate to his own work? But think about it. What's the, the, the look at what the son grew up with? Look what he yeah, grew up feeding on. That's true. That's true. He probably has Oedipal issues. And look yeah. at her. She's a blondie, literally. Yeah, she's blonde as well. But I'll tell you what, Blondie has no competition. I mean, Dagwood is not even looking at her. He's got food, and he doesn't even notice his son's hot girlfriend. I, that's. I mean, isn't that the joy of raising a son is when he gets to a certain age, he's going to bring hot tail into the house for you to stare at? <laughs> Yet to happen oh, with my son, oh. by the way. Yet oh. to happen. Okay. Yet Still to- waiting, Owen. Still waiting. All right. <laughs> Wait, what was the other one? I'm looking up. What was the other story you were we got away from? Uh, I forgot what it was where you were digging yourself a hole. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, about women that are the same body types being. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you just cleanse that palate. Yeah. A new one. All right. I'm a fucking pig. Who cares? No I apologize for my me. internet connection. Uh, I hope it didn't disrupt the flow at all today. No, I think it was fine. I And I think most people listen on. Our, not that many people watch our videos anyway. I don't know why. You guys should be watching us. How could you deprive yourselves of a of a bald guy and a guy sitting in a Turn fucking. Christopher Walken for a second. In a living room and now. Watch yeah. us. Um, all right. Well, listen, we want to thank Midcoast Media for doing yes. a fine job as always. John is in London, so Heidi Ho to you and uh, <laughs> Key and uh, Beth and Chris and everybody else that makes the everybody. show come together. We want to thank our sponsors, and we want to have you support our sponsors. That's how we keep the lights on in here. Go yeah. to uh, try first leaf.com slash papers and you get going to get yourself a deal on some wine you're going to go to game time you're going to go to the game time app and put in papers and you're going to get yourself twenty dollars off your first purchase yep. uh you're going to go to uh what's the last one um uh, Go to prizepicks.com slash paper. Use code papers for a first deposit match of up to $100. Mike, anything you want to promote? Yes, I want to promote you and I having a phone call this week or something about our merch. Yes. How about that? Yeah, we've had a lot of great suggestions from you guys. And uh, we get we we come up. I think we're going to come up with like three things. And then we're gonna we're gonna launch it because Christmas is coming, and that's the time where you want to sell merch. There it is. All right. Uh, other than that, I think everyone should take it ish. Take it ish. All right. Bye bye. Jokey, jokey, jokey Sunday papers. Jokey, jokey, jokey. Jokey, 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 jokey. Jokey, jokey, jokey Sunday papers. That's crazy. Jokey, jokey Sunday papers. Jokey, 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 Sunday papers, jokey, 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 Sunday papers, jokey, jokey, Sunday papers. Well, I'm glad you made it through it. Take it easy. Honestly, though, uh, I don't think you could pay me enough money to listen to this podcast. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, like, I don't know how he does it. <laughs>